Guy Miner just had an awesome elk hunt, and in this video, he's gonna tell us the story. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. We're back with Guy Miner. Thank you, Guy, for joining us. Absolutely. This is kind of a full circle story. We'll get to that in a moment. Tell us about this elk hunt. How did this happen? Well, this started out because it's been six years since I shot an elk. Mm -hmm. That was unsatisfactory. Too long. And, 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 and I managed to get a hold of uh, an outfitter down in Oregon. Actually, mm -hmm. he got a hold of me and I said, hey guy, I've got an elk depredation permit, which means there's too many elk on a guy's ranch down nice. there. And I can get you into that ranch and we can go elk hunting. Happy to help you were, right? I, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, my freezer is so full of good elk meat now. Ooh, awesome. I love Central Oregon as well. It's just, there's something about it. It's kind of like Central Washington, but you know, a little different, a lot of open country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. There's some juniper trees. The, uh, the topography is rough. There's a lot mm -hmm. of canyons and mountains, and it's along the uh, John Day River area. Mm. Uh, very, very impressive area. Very cool. Oh, yeah. And this was an opportunity to get some hunting results with a bullet that we've tested right here on the channel, Hornady's 30 caliber, 178 grain ELDX bullet. Let's talk about the results that we saw in our original story. Sure. I was I was very impressed with that bullet when, when we tested it earlier. Mm -hmm. I... Uh, I bumped up the powder charge up to enough to get us at 2,860 feet per second. Nice. And I wanted to torture test this thing. I like my I like bullets <laughs> that don't come apart on, on big game. And I was thinking right. about this as a big game bullet. So at a mere 20 yards, 2,860 feet per second, slammed it into the ballistics gel, mm -hmm. 27 and a half inches of penetration. Yep. Uh, bullet weighed 110 grains. Did not on. come apart. Did not come as apart. As you can see here in the right. picture. Yeah. Um, mushroomed out to 0 .615. Mm -hmm. So basically doubled its diameter, hung on to over 100 grains of bullet, and that was at really high impact speed. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of confidence in it. Plus, it shot real well for my rifle. You know, not, you're not going to win any matches with this, but right. uh, consistently staying under an inch, mm -hmm. 0 .7, 0 .8 inch groups, um, nice little groups, and it's like that's good enough. Yeah, that's perfect, especially for this rifle setup. You know, you've got a lower power loop hold scope on there. You're not going to be reaching out to 800 yards with this thing. This is more for typical deer hunting, elk hunting distances and kind of more of a classic setup and rig. So it seems like a great pairing to me. Yeah, it, it went together. I, I've been really successful with this rifle over the years. This is the second elk, two bears, two prong horn. I don't remember how many mule deer, a dozen maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's been a great <laughs> rifle for me. So you're going to want to check out the 178 ELDX story. And then Guy and I also did a story comparing 6.5 Creedmoor to 30-06 for hunting. And I know a lot of you have championed this same mantra of why mess with success, right? 30-06 is a hammer. It's traditional. You've got a lot of ammo choices. There's really a lot, you know, to say about it that's really awesome. So. Let's recap the 178 ELDX specs here. So typical for 30 cal would be in that 125 to 220 range with maybe 168 being that kind of median classic uh, bullet weight that you'll see in competition quite a bit. Um, 178 takes it up a little bit. I know 175s are really popular in competition because of their higher BC, right? you know, and some of those, those kinds of characteristics. So more or less, this is, this kind of duplicates that weight and that sort of performance envelope. Yeah, and I've always thought of like the, the 150s and 30 caliber for as a great deer bullet. Mm -hmm. uh, the 180 class, and I'd put this 178 in there with them, is uh, pretty much to me the start of the heavier game, mm -hmm. uh, heavier bullet, heavier game kind of a thing. I think about that for elk, deer, mm -hmm. that sort of stuff, um, bear. All, all those things, and, and this is a this is a, quite a bullet. Mm -hmm. uh, very high BC on it for 30 cal too. Yeah, so definitely. So point uh, five five two is the G1 BC on that. So you don't have to start out at max velocity to get pretty good downrange performance. Yeah, and what I've noted with ELDX in the right rifle is that it can be exceptionally accurate. The 143 ELDX and 65 is a great example where I've had consistent approximately half MOA results that I've observed in a uh, Ruger Precision Rifle, in a Bergara, 
in, in multiple rigs that we've tested. So, you know, the bullets definitely, if you're coming from the match world and you shoot ELDMs, these are going to be very familiar. We also compared ELDM versus ELDX in ballistics gel with some really uh, interesting results as well. The M surprised me on that. It, uh, yeah. It, it hung together pretty darn well. It has a, it has a thinner jacket. It's yeah. oriented towards match shooting. But yeah, a lot of people are now shooting with match bullets, including those ELDMs. And, and that's a decision that you have to make for yourself. You know, the, the, if you're comfortable with it, obviously we want to see quick kills. We want to see humane hunting, you know, all of that. And if you're confident, I say go for it myself. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the load. So you've got the, the 178 ELDX Ramshot Hunter, 58 and a half grains. Do not use that directly. Always confirm powder charges and loads with manufacturers uh, published OEM data. Okay, with that out of the way, why Ramshot? Ram, Ramshot has proven really good for me with 180-inch class, that, that general bullet weight mm -hmm. out of the 30 6 uh, one of the nice things about it is the high velocity that you get. I mean, 2860, we're knocking on the door of 2,900 feet per second yeah. with uh, basically a 180 grain bullet. That's uh, that's right up there for a 30 out six. Yeah, it's ripping pretty good. So, yeah. In fact, it was ripping so good that my shoulder and I decided to bump that down <laughs> a little bit for the hunting load and say, right. okay, let's take a little bit of the sting out of this thing. Now, you know, I did a special job for you here. You um, did. You did. Let's see. When you got a threaded muzzle, you can use a brake. Is that what they're called? A brake. <laughs> yes. And, and I completely spaced that off. I didn't even think about it. So. But um, seriously, the 7 PRC, you know, the the 22 oh. inch with the brake on it, Salmon River Solutions. Yeah. It knocked off so much of the recoil. I would dang near shoot that thing all day. I mean, it was it was astonishing. Now you're gonna definitely need an ear pro. Oh yeah even for a single shot, no questions asked. Whereas you, depending on your comfortable uh, level with, with, with hearing protection, might get one shot off with a 30 out of six without a break, and you might not worry about it. I, I don't personally, but you know I know a lot of people do. Eh, it's one shot, you know. Not with a break though. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, I shot a, a ported uh, rifle killed a deer with it. Mm -hmm. That was the only time I ever shot that thing without ear protection, mm -hmm. oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Ears rang for an hour. Yeah, so. not not fun at all. So back to the Ramshot Hunter. Uh, I've had really good results with Ramshot Hunter with Magnum cartridges, like mm -hmm. the 6.5 PRC. Uh, when I tested the Bergara 6.5 PRC, uh, tremendous accuracy with a. Uh, we were down in the 30s with a five shot group. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I like about it is you know it flows so nicely yes. through it, you know, just you got your powder measure, you can just throw those charges and they come out pretty close. Plus or minus maybe 0.1 grain, which is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Which opens up the door for, for progressive loading, which is, is, is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You get your CCI 200, large rifle primer, pretty standard there, brand mm -hmm. new brass. Yep. Uh, knocking on the door of, of 3,000 feet per second, as we we're, mentioned previously. Well, we're 20, 27. Oh, sorry. 90. Yeah, almost 2,800 feet per second. I, I had uh, I had inverted those two two numbers there. Yeah, but that that 2,800 number that that's for this heavy of bullet and the 30 out six. That's that and the 30 cal. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah, it's 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 good. Yep. yep. It worked. RCBS dies. Mech marksman. I, I I love that press. It's just a cast iron solid piece of goodness. Mason made in USA. Really, as you can see in this picture, open on the front. Yes. Very easy to, unlike the, the O-frame presses where you kind of have to maybe reach for Work the around a things and all that. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I, I really like that press too, and I decided to use it for this project. Uh, probably use it for some more 30 out 6 as mm -hmm. well. Load up some more. Definitely. Uh, those lights. Yeah, the KMS squared light. My <laughs> goodness, that really helps. Um, I like the way it looks in the picture too, yeah. but honestly, <laughs> uh, my loading room isn't all that brightly lit. Right. And so those are, you know, they light up your work area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. it helps. Lighting, lighting is key, you know, like in my Cerakote booth, I just added more lights for when I'm applying Cerakote and what, what a world of difference. Amazing. Okay, let's talk ballistics. So you ran the Hornady Ford op and it looks like you've got a 200 yard zero. So t first off, talk to me about that decision. About the 200 yard zero? Yeah. That's typical for me in my hunting rifles. Mm -hmm. uh, my lever guns, I sight in at 100, but my bolt action rifles are mostly at 200 yards, and that gives, it makes it real easy to just hold on target, 
out mm -hmm. to 300, no problem, 350 maybe. Yep. Uh, somewhere in there, you know, the trajectory starts curving and a 400 yard shot's getting pretty far. Yeah. I wasn't anticipating a 400 yard shot, I was anticipating 300, maybe a little over, like most of my shots have mm -hmm. been in recent years. Mm -hmm. But no, um, it turned out to be 400, and I was really glad I'd studied the ballistics charts because I practiced yes. at 300. Yeah, you see here, between 300 and 400, you're at between seven and a half and 21 and a half, so that's That's a, a big, big difference. difference. Yep. Yeah, yeah, dropping seven and a half inches at 300 yards is mm -hmm. no big deal, no problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Dropping 21 inches at <laughs> 400, that that's a big deal mm -hmm. and a lot to deal with. Also, uh, I was glad that I had taken a look at the wind drift on that too because I wound up hunting on a very windy day, a big stiff okay. crosswind I had to deal with. Yep. Um, one of the things that really impressed me was we're still talking 2,000 feet per second, a little over that, at 500 yards. Wow. So. That's copper expansion velocity, if you if you, yeah, were, you that's know. That's true. Yeah, above what we need for this, which is about 1,600 feet per second, yeah. according to Hornady. So we're definitely going to be able to open up yep. out there at five. If you've got a longer range rig, if you've got a longer range hunting opportunity, a load like this will work. So do you recall with Ford off what you input for miles per hour on wind here? 10. Okay, so 10 miles per hour, 10 inches at 400. And, and that is important. And with the size of elk vitals, there's also some forgiveness there, right? Yes, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> yeah, so if you held 10, uh, you know, for wind and, and you got a 10 mile per hour gust, you're, you're gonna be, you're gonna be right near center, you know? Yeah. And, and with, I don't know, maybe within five inches in, either, in, in all directions, you're probably still in, in a good zone, I would say. Yeah, yeah, you've got a, a kill zone about the size of a basketball. Yeah. So you're okay. Yep. Um, that's where we got some forgiveness there. The wind was a big factor on mm -hmm. hunt day. Um, I wound up holding about probably 15 inches. Okay. And because it was a higher wind. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, right on the front of her brisket. Mm -hmm. And that did a real nice job of getting into the vitals. Yep. So have um, you ever run a Kestrel or any kind of wind I, eater? I have. Didn't have one with me. Yeah. Probably should have. Yeah, because I'm thinking, you know, the more I do competitive shooting, the more I'll take that mentality and that equipment list kind of into the field for, for hunting. I haven't had to take real far shots yet, but uh, obviously you want to be on your game, right? <laughs> you do. I, I wanted to come home with elk meat. I did mm -hmm. not want, uh, didn't want the elk to win. Yeah. In reality, you're probably more likely to use wind on vegetation as a wind flag than you are to get out your wind meter. <laughs> that's that's and that's exactly <laughs> what we that did is you know <laughs> feeling that wind and and you know kind of talking. The mm -hmm. one real thing that was really nice uh, Zach was uh, the guide and the outfitter mm -hmm. and he's a, a very experienced uh, precision rifle shooter. Excellent. And, and yeah, he's he's done really well. Um, and so he and I were talking about the wind before I made the shot, and he gave me some good input. It was interesting. We both agreed on approximate wind velocity Perfect. and on what my what my lead needed to be yeah call it a lead yeah no that's that's awesome yeah um so yeah you know this looks like something that would perform good out to 600 if if you had the right optic and you know we're maybe slamming steel or something like that uh and again this is a this is a very familiar rig that you guys have seen on the channel multiple hunt stories uh we did the sporter barrel threading job if you go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com we've We've already done a few of these for, for customers. Right. And we've enhanced the process, we've enhanced the, the, the bill of materials on that. So uh, anyways, if, if that's of interest, let us know and, and we can get you on the list for that. Um, yeah, a very good, reasonably lightweight, classic rig. You know, it doesn't get more classic than the 30-06 with the wood stock. Not right? really. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. And, and, and I really like that. I mean, I, I like some of the fancy new stuff, the chassis mm -hmm. rifles and the, the uh, laminated stock rifles, mm -hmm. um, stuff with the muzzle brakes and the, the custom actions. I like all that. I've been part of that world yeah. off and on. But uh, my real soft spot is, uh, is, <laughs> is, you know, something like this. Well... I'll tell you if I was if I was going hunting, I'd be tempted by this guy. Oh yeah, this is the Bergara B14 squared crest. Now 308, you know, for elk, I would definitely prefer the 30 out six. I would say, but you know, with this chambered in 65 PRC, for example, or even the 300 Win Mag, that would be. I'd be fine with with the uh, 308 for elk. Yeah, just a uh, good bullet selection. Yep. you know, and and obviously 
proper placement. That's the big thing. Hit them, hit them where it counts. I was just talking with Alpha Munitions about their OCD, their optimized case design, and, and the pressures that they can run. And that would be another interesting experiment. It would basically be get 308 into that 30 out 6 territory, which, you know, is, isn't going to push pressures too bad. Um, but you're going to get a short action as well, which right. is, is kind of cool. A little, little more compact. We're yeah. getting off the subject. That's fine. We, I got, we do I, that. I definitely got to go hunting. Okay, so elk, a little backgrounder here. Yeah, uh, elk are, to me, fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just love them. There's about a million of them in the U.S. and Canada now, uh, mm -hmm. most of the Rocky Mountain elk, because mm -hmm. there's you've got two elk down in California. They're the smallest of the elk. You've got the Roosevelt elk on the Pacific Northwest coast. They're the mm -hmm. biggest. They've got bulls that go over 1,000 pounds. Wow. Yeah, 11 and 1,200 wow. pound bulls I've heard about. <laughs> they don't have the biggest antlers. The Rocky Mountain elk Kay. have that. But uh, I've seen some Roosevelts with some enormous thick, heavy antlers. We have elk right here. I've, yes. I've seen them. My favorite moment with elk was in the snow, uh, a bull kind of just trotting along. And you know, it's like a, a locomotive, the, the breath coming out. Oh yeah. The big puffs and just the snow flying. And it's just like, that is quite an animal there. <laughs> it is, you know, and, and the bulls, uh, you know, six, 700 pounds is mm -hmm. kind of normal for mm -hmm. a, a mature bull. And a mature cow like this was about 500 pound animal. This wow. is this is not your 150 pound whitetail. Yeah, this hefty. is this is a big big animal. <laughs> um, yeah, and and that's good because they taste great. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I had some of your sausage yesterday with the habanero in it. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Oh, that, that was, was good. that is good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and. They're interesting also because they herd up, and of course this time of year we're in January, and the bulls are pretty much off in their little bachelor groups again. They're mm -hmm. all buddy-buddy after having beaten each other up in September, October during the rut. <laughs> right, um, right. So now they're all buddy-buddy again, <laughs> and, and the gals, all the, all the uh, cows and calves and everything, they're all herded up together too. And they may be in little groups of two, three, four animals, or they may be in dozens. Mm -hmm. um, we saw one group probably 65 elk. Wow. That's, yeah, that was pretty impressive. It's thrilling. Yeah, they're they're just amazing animals. Um, <coughs> so tell me about the outfitter a little bit. Sure, uh, AOA Outfitters, and that's uh, run by uh, Zach Bruce, that's his thing, and he is a- In Oregon? In Oregon. Okay, Yep. Gotcha. And he's a, uh, he's been a cowboy, a real cowboy, <laughs> uh, ranch manager. He knows, <coughs> excuse me, he knows a lot about elk. He knows about his area that he's guiding in. Mm -hmm. uh, he offers hunts for lots of different animals, um, bear, mule deer, elk, elk with great big antlers. Mm -hmm. My hunt was elk with no antlers. Right. <laughs> um, and that's fine. Um, he's in that John Day River country in central Oregon that we talked about earlier. It's just, awesome. just gorgeous country. Difficult country. Yeah. Um, it's not the easiest country to hike in, mm -hmm. but that's okay. He's got great equipment. Uh, I mean, he's using a Swarovski spotting scope, really high end. Mm -hmm. um, good boots, good spotting scopes, good binos, range finder. He has all that stuff. Um, and he puts his hunters up in a very comfortable, nice cabin. It could easily hold four. I was in it alone. Nice. So, yeah. So if you call AOA, tell them that Ultimate Reloader sent you. You and bet. that you watched Guy's video. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the actual hunt. You bet. So it was a depredation permit, so we're on private land. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's fine. One of the nice things about that is your group is probably the only people on that area, at least the only people hunting that area. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the trigger happy, beer guzzling. Uh, no, types. no, <laughs> right. absolutely not. It's um, orange, but ah, uh, it's moving. Yeah. <laughs> I know, people <laughs> sighting other hunters through their rifle scopes, <laughs> yeah. bad, bad stuff. Oh, man, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we managed to do this in one day. Mm -hmm. um, got up early. I think the truck showed up about 6.30 or 6 o'clock, something like that, picked me up, and uh, off we went. And did a little spotting from down below, mm -hmm. and we found a group of elk way up there. Hmm. And that's when I knew I was in trouble. Because we're, we're in the we're in the truck, and there's only one way to get there. You can't drive the truck up right, there. Right. There's one way is to walk, and you know I've been having a little trouble with my left leg, so yeah. my walking conditioning is not what it should be. 
And uh, yeah, there's this mix of melted snow and a little bit of snow patches here and there, and the ground is just saturated. So every mm -hmm. step, you can feel that that boot is just sucking out of out of yeah. the mud that's been sinking into. Uh, and there's th th this hill. I honestly, it was a lot steeper <laughs> than I thought <laughs> thought it was going to be. And what we did is we actually saw these elk from the road, and they're only a couple hundred yards up above us, but not in a place where we could take a safe shot. Right. So. We went around, big long hike around it, up a creek, actually walking through the creek some of it, and then we cut up the hill, and we're trying to get on that ridge line and start working our way towards the elk gotcha. that we'd seen. Good enough, okay, a good mm -hmm. plan. Um, you know about chucker birds? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Well, they cackling in the bushes. They blew our yeah. stock. Oh no. Yeah, they didn't flush, <laughs> but we're, we're going along very quietly. I mean, I'm ready for a shot that could be at rather short range. So we're getting closer and closer to where we'd seen the elk, and these chucker are out milling around in front of us, and we go, uh oh. And yeah. they went off to the side. It turned out the elk had actually been coming towards us, but down the other side. Okay. And they were closer than we thought they yep. were. And these chucker went running over there <laughs> to get away from us. <laughs> and the next thing we saw, the elk were three or four hundred yards away, running. Wow. Yeah, yeah it was. It became an impossible no, situation. Not what you want. Yeah. No. And then they then they left the area that we could we could hunt. Um, oh well. So <laughs> by elk, um, regroup. Yep. And there we are, we're up on the ridge top, and the next thing I've got uh, Dale and Zach and I all have our binos out and we're s looking for other elk, because we'd seen some other elk in the area too. And um, my 66 year old heart sank when Zach says, ah, there's some. And I'm thinking, that's got to be in the next county. They were <laughs> a long way away. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, even through the 10 power binos, they were a little bitty elk. And so we go down this ridge line that we'd just come up, mm -hmm. and up the other ridge line, and I'll freely admit those two 38-year-old guides made me look pretty old and slow. <laughs> uh, but we all got there. Yep. And then we do the stock on the elk. And there's mm -hmm. actually getting to be quite a few of them over there. We'd seen a couple. And then two groups of elk that we had not seen before came mm. up over a ridge, merged together in one pretty good size herd. Nice. Um, I don't know, 30, 40 animals maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're all milling around over by a tree and some of them are starting to lay down and settle in. And so we are, we stalk keeping the trees and stuff between us and them. Finally, we ran out of trees. There was another band of trees we wanted to get up to because I wasn't going to take a five or 600 yard shot. I'm just, right. I'm, I'm not ready for that, especially not with this ridge. Sure, so. yeah. So to get across that open ground, we actually all got down on all fours and crawled Probably close to 200 yards. Was a ghillie suit involved? No, it was okay. not. Not Just this checking. time. No not chucker time. around? No, thankfully. <laughs> but it, it was funny. It brought back old Marine Corps days of crawling around with a rifle. It brought back old SWAT sniper memories. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a lot more fun than either of those situations. Yeah. And so we managed to uh, move along there without upsetting the elk. I don't know if they saw us or not, but mm -hmm. they didn't leave. So that was a good thing. Mm -hmm. And we finally get to basically the last trees between us and, and we're set up the bog death grip Kay. tripod, yep. ranged them 405 yards. I went, hmm, that's interesting. I've never shot this rifle that far. <laughs> so actually I think I have, but it's been a while. And not this load I hadn't. <laughs> right. And, uh, but I knew the ballistics and there was a serious crosswind that we figured was around 15 miles an hour, so held mm -hmm. on the front and then held up. I'm looking at a 20, 21 inch drop at that range. And you are you don't have a mill dot or anything like that? It here, has right? a couple of long range dots. But oh, it does, okay. But honestly, um, <laughs> I just went with the crosshairs and... Estimated on the animal what the distance would be, that right, kind of thing? Okay. Right, And yeah. uh, wound up a, a little above her back, and I don't usually okay. do that, but I did this time. Yep. So I'm actually holding off quite a bit. I'm about 15 inches off laterally or horizontally yep. and about 20 inches vertically <laughs> and uh, boom and you could hear even in the wind I could hear the bullet hit uh, it actually snapped her leg bone Wow! and it went right into the brisket and I was so impressed when we field dressed her there was a hole in the heart. Wow so, nice job. Yeah amazing Lethality. about elk though <laughs> amazing about elk with all that damage she still covered nearly 200 yards. I just, the, some of these animals like bears and, and elk and yeah. just like robo animal. They, they are not willing to give it up. Yeah, that's and, amazing. And so we approached again and I took a much closer range shot and finished her off.
Uh -huh. But wow, so there we are. Now, I've got 500 pound animal down, uh -huh. and I'm so glad I've got two big, strong 38 year old guys that are <laughs> really fit, and everybody's got a backpack, <laughs> and because we we're gonna be crossing state lines with the meat, it had to be deboned anyway okay. to stop the spread of chronic wasting disease, okay. or at least slow it down. Right. And so we deboned her up there, and honestly, Zach and Dale did most of that work. Um, you know, I helped, <laughs> and and we got all this meat in and uh, got it all off the bones and got it all in game bags, and loaded up our packs and headed on down. It was about a mile down to the uh, down to the truck. Oh, and that's that's a ways when you're carrying a load it, like it that. Is, isn't it is, it is, and and the guys were nice to me. Um, you know, I got the I, I had the tenderloins and the back straps <laughs> in, in my in my pack. So that's but you know an elk back strap is like big. That's so, just the best meat ever, isn't it? It is very, trap. very good. Oof, yeah. Yeah. So, and they, they had the heavier loads. We all got mm -hmm. down there, and uh, I felt pretty good. You know, I, I tailed along behind them, but I got there. Mm -hmm. And, boy, that was that was a good deal. That is so yeah. cool. Yeah, and now now you have a lot of meat. Um, yes. So here's here's some of that goodness. <laughs> yes. I, uh, I took the tenderloins home with me, and I took mm -hmm. the rest of the meat to a local meat processor, wild game processing up near Eniat, mm -hmm. and um, said, okay, you take care of the rest of this, and I'll just take care of these tenderloins right here at my house. Yeah. And so very quickly got them in the, the sous vide, cook them through, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. seared them in a cast iron pan. Oh, nice. they were so good. Yeah. Yeah. So. So it's just something that is hard to come by unless you go hunting, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Very good. And of course, yesterday I brought um, brought the summer sausage. So good. Yeah. <laughs> that was good stuff. And spicy. I yes. Totally, I totally love that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So to wrap up, ELDX, would you hunt with that guy again? Absolutely. I think mm -hmm. it's a great hunting bullet. Mm -hmm. um, we, did the, we did the stress test up close into the gel blocks, yep. and it held up well to that, and then as far as... Uh, Flying accurately and mm -hmm. taking down the elk, it did pretty good. I, I have absolutely no. I think if I'd hit a little higher in the heart, it would have worked very quickly. I've done that before on a lot of animals, mm -hmm. basically taken off because the the blood goes in and out up in the top of the heart and the bottom right. is just muscle. Right. So if I if I'd hit two three inches higher, I think we'd have had a dead elk mm -hmm. right there mm -hmm. um, without that two hundred yard chase. Yeah. So yeah, I like that bullet. I'm glad I tried it. Mm -hmm. Really really good stuff. Um, I would be curious to try the 7 PRC with, yes. with a, an elk. I think that'd be a, a pretty good rig to run with that. I'm sure of it. Yeah, it'd be interesting to compare with ballistics gel. You know, you've got a smaller diameter bullet going faster. You know, what, what are the, the trade-offs, basically? I know with that break, that rifle is certainly really pleasant to shoot given that you have the appropriate mm -hmm. hearing protection. And it, of course, I, I picked a 22 inch barrel because I wanted to run it suppressed. So, so many different options. <laughs> yeah. Here's what we wanna know is, what do you think about Guy's elk hunt? Uh, also, for it, did you take an elk this year? Uh, where did you take it? What were, cartridge were you shooting? What kind of rifle? Tell us a little bit about your story. And what do you think Guy ought to use next time? Drop that comment and we'll start a discussion. Thank you, Guy, for Thank sharing you. the results and the meat. Really oh, yeah. appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Well, there's <laughs> a lot to share. Yes. <laughs> that concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.